In this video, I'm going to be showing you the top 25 settings you need to change if you've just got your brand new iPhone 15, 15 Pro, or any other iPhone that runs the latest iOS 17. I'm going to be covering security settings, privacy settings, feature settings, as well as app settings with plenty of tips and tricks along the way to help you get the most out of your iPhone. But first, I am giving away this brand new iPhone 15. And if you want a chance to win, then be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and also subscribe to my main channel, Dion Schuddeboom, link in the description. And then leave a comment with your favorite feature of the iPhone 15 Pro along with your Instagram username, and then follow me on Instagram at Dion Schuddeboom, where I will announce the winner on the 29th of December. All right, so to start, let's take a look at some battery settings. So what we're going to do uh, is jump into the settings app and then scroll down to where we find battery. And then first here, we have the option to show the battery percentage in the top right corner of the display, something I like to have turned on. Uh, and then if we scroll down to where we find battery health and charging and then tap into charging optimization, uh, we have two options here that are important. Now, the first is optimized battery charging. And what this is going to do is essentially keep track of how you typically charge your phone. Uh, so when you plug in your phone, it's first going to charge up to 80% and then wait with the remaining last 20% to when you typically, uh, closer to when you typically unplug your phone. And this is going to help limit the wear of your battery. Now, the second option beneath that, the 80% limit, essentially does a similar thing, but then takes it one step further by actually capping the total charge to 80% battery. And this, once again, is going to further help limit the wear on your battery and help it last longer. But of course, you are sacrificing that top 20% of your battery life, which for me is not worth it. However, for you, it may be. So that option is there. But personally, I recommend using the first option as it kind of gives the best of both. It will still optimize the battery charging to extend its life a bit, but also still give you access to all of your battery capacity. Next, let's take a look at Wi-Fi. So we're going to tap into Wi-Fi here uh, and then scroll down to where we find Ask to Join Networks. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm in public, uh, I don't like to be prompted to join public networks like, say, of Starbucks uh, or some sort of restaurant, uh, as often these networks are not secure or safe, and I'd rather only join a network that I choose to join. So you can actually turn this feature off entirely by changing this to off, and this way you won't be prompted to join a public network uh, when you are not home. On the subject of connectivity, we go from Wi-Fi to mobile service. Now, here we have a few key options uh, that I highly recommend you change. At first, we're going to scroll down to the page here all the way down to where we find iCloud Drive and iCloud Backup. Now, I'm going to talk about iCloud as we go throughout the video, and these are actually functions that I do enjoy using. However, not on mobile data, as this will take significant amounts of data. And you may say, well, I'm on an unlimited data plan. This doesn't matter, but it will still take a lot of battery. And this is something that, unfortunately, you can never have unlimited amounts of. So my recommendation is to turn both of these off as this means your iCloud drive sync as well as your iCloud backup will not be performed when you are out uh, and on using uh, your mobile data and only will be done when you're at home on your Wi-Fi network. And then if we scroll up to the top of the page here uh, and click on mobile data options and then click on voice and data, uh, we have the option to choose between 4G LTE, 5G on or 5G auto. Now, normally speaking, uh, by default, your iPhone will be set to either 5G on or 5G auto. Uh, and even in a big city like London, where I am, 5G is rare. Uh, in fact, I think I've only used it once and most of the time I'm on 4G. So instead of having my phone use battery to consistently look, uh, to constantly look for 5G networks or towers to join, I'd rather just keep it on 4G or LTE as that gives me reliable speeds and service and saves a lot of battery compared to 5G. Now, let's talk about updates. So if we scroll down here to general and then click on software updates, click on automatic updates. And then here we have the option to turn on not just iOS updates, which I recommend you turn on uh, as this means you'll automatically get the latest release and also the newest features. Uh, but the one I mostly recommend you turn on is security responses and system files. Now, let's say there is a uh, glitch or some sort of exploit in iOS that could potentially put your phone or more importantly, your data at risk. You're going to want to make sure that you get that patch as soon as Apple releases is it and this here ensures that your phone will always be up to date at least from a security perspective but again while you're here i suggest turning on ios updates as well one of my favorite features uh, in iMessage is being able to send full resolution photos and videos to my friends and family, as many other apps such as WhatsApp uh, will actually compress your photos and give you a worse resolution or worse quality version. However, to make sure that iOS or that iMessage rather does give you the full resolution version, what you're going to want to do is scroll down in the settings page uh, to where you find messages and then scroll all the way down and make sure that this option is off low quality image mode. Having this off means it will send you the full uncompressed photos or videos that you share to your family and friends. 
And this brings me to a setting that has a huge impact on your battery life, and that has to do with mail. So if we scroll down here, tap on the mail icon, then tap on accounts, and then fetch new data, first you're going to want to make sure that push is turned off, as this is going to mean that your phone won't be constantly looking to see if you have new emails. Instead, you want to be able to tell it when to do so. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can either set this to manually, hourly, or every 15 minutes. Now, manually means it's only going to check for your emails when you load up the mail app this i think is a little too rare but this is the most battery efficient version however by the middle ground that i like to do uh, is hourly this means that my emails will almost be will always be somewhat up to date but also it won't be checking it overly often again consuming more battery so the shorter the the, the greater the intervals whether that be hourly or manually uh, the less battery it takes and then of course if you have it set to every 15 minutes uh, you'll have more up-to-date emails but it will take more battery Let's take a look at the Notes app, as this is a fantastic way to quickly note down information, but sometimes slightly sensitive information. Now, I would never recommend uh, storing things like passwords uh, or banking information in Notes. You may have addresses or contact numbers, names, etc., uh, that you want to protect. Now, there is a way to actually password lock a note. So let's say I have this very secretive uh, cafe list to try note. Uh, what we can go ahead and do is press and hold on that note, and then we can actually tap on lock note. And here we have the option to either lock it with your iPhone's passcode or to create a separate password uh, specifically for that note. So let's go and use the password here. As you can see, if I now tap on the note, I have to type in my password to enter it. Back to the home screen. In fact, speaking of the home screen, uh, I've got a setting to show you here as well. So if we tap into the settings app and then scroll down to where we find home screen and app library, first you have the option to choose where newly downloaded apps go, either to the app library only or to your home screen. So if you're ever downloading apps from the app store and you don't see them on your home screen and don't know where they've gone, uh, this means they will have been stored in the app library, which you'll find on the last page of your home screen. But instead, I'd rather have all my apps just show on my home screen. So you're gonna wanna make sure that the first option is selected for that. Now, second, we also have the option to turn on or off the search bar that will show on the home screen. So just to show you what that looks like, that's that search word here. And you can tap that to search for anything on your phone, a useful feature, but an easier way to access it is to simply pull down from anywhere on the home screen. And this will give you the same function. In fact, if we actually turn this off on the home screen, what you will see is an overview of the number of pages that you have and you also get the ability to quickly cycle between your pages by moving across them with your finger. So you still get the search feature, and again, that option to quickly go through your pages. Quite useful. We've now made it to one of the most important parts of this video, and this is gonna be a series of security uh, and also privacy settings that are super essential to change. So to start, let's scroll down to where we find face ID and passcode. I'm gonna quickly type in my password here. Uh, and first, you can actually choose to set an alternative appearance in face ID. So for example, if you wear sunglasses often, uh, face ID can have difficulties with that. So here you can just set up a second appearance, uh, or if say ladies, you have different hairstyles, men, if you have a beard, uh, you have the option to create a new appearance to make sure uh, that face ID will still work no matter your fashion or your hairstyle choices. Uh, and then if we scroll down to a more serious setting, uh, we have the option to turn on require attention for face ID. Now, what does this mean? Well, face ID, of course, scans your face to unlock your phone, but requiring attention means it will actually require you to look at your phone to make eye contact with your phone in order for it to unlock. So just one extra step of security that I suggest you turn on. And then if we scroll down, we have a really important section and that is called allowed access when locked. And this is essentially gonna determine what your phone can do as long as it is locked. And ideally you want that to be close to nothing, right? Because anyone that doesn't know your password or isn't registered on your face ID, you probably don't want them to be, able to, to be able to do much with your phone. But still this setting is often overlooked and I often see people have a lot of these enabled. So my suggestion is to start by turning them all off and then carefully going through to see which you actually need. So the few exceptions I make really have to do with the widgets that I have on my lock screen. So for example, um, I have a weather widget. I want that to show and to be up to date. So I allow that. Uh, but other things like Siri, replying to a message, and most importantly, accessories. So things that plug into your phone to perhaps sync data or put things on your phone, you're going to want to make sure that that is absolutely turned 
off. Now, something you want turned on though is this setting beneath it, and that is called erase data. Now, th what this is essentially going to mean is if your password uh, is incorrectly typed 10 times in a row, your phone is automatically going to erase itself. Now, this isn't good if you're prone to forgetting your password, but let's say you do lose or your phone is stolen. The first thing that person is probably gonna do is try to enter your phone by guessing your password. This means that after 10 failed attempts, your phone will erase itself, which means that even when your phone isn't safe, your data still will be. Continuing on with more privacy and security settings here, we're gonna tap on privacy and security. Uh, and here we have a bunch of options to go through and I'm gonna go through some of the most important ones. And the first have to do with location services. Now, many apps want to ask you for your location and the reality is many don't need to uh, and none need to have it always. No app needs to be constantly using, uh, sharing your or seeing your location rather. So I suggest scrolling through this list and if you see any of these apps where it has the word always next to it, make sure you switch it to while using or never as no app should be constantly monitoring your location. Uh, so as you can see, most of mine are set to while using as of course there are moments where it is handy to have, uh, but a lot of them I turn off. So for example, Instagram, I don't know why it has the option, but somehow it has the option to always see your location. Never allow that. Just keep it on while I'm using the app or say uh, ask next time when I share. So what that's going to do is prompt you every time when it asks your location. Back in the uh, privacy and security page here, we also have photos and photos is kind of a similar story where a lot of apps will want to ask for your photos, but again, most really don't need to. So most of them I have set to either limit access or off. Very few will I have full access. So the great thing about limit access is you can actually choose specifically which photos you want to share with that app. So you can see that if I have full access, it'll show all of my library where with limited access, I can actually manually select which photos I want to share. So specific things I want to upload to that app or page, I can highlight those and then make sure it doesn't access the rest. And again, certain apps that will want to see your photos, uh, for example, let's say TikTok, I want to turn that off. Uh, I can go ahead and tap on none to make sure that app no longer has access to my photos. And then basically do the same thing with your microphone and camera. Now, the reason I picked out location, uh, photos, mic and camera, I think these are the most important, but really my suggestion, if you have the time, take 15 minutes or so, go through this entire list. You can see there's so much data that your phone has uh, and so many apps want it and make sure that only the apps that truly need it, get it. The others don't need it. Next, let's take a look at brightness. Now, this is a question I get often, and that has to do with how do you turn off auto brightness as by default it has been on. And for a while now, Apple's made it quite difficult to turn off. So to do this, what you're gonna want to do is go into accessibility, uh, and then we're gonna click on display and text size. And then if we scroll down here to where we find auto brightness, that's where you will have the option to turn it on. Now, normally speaking, I suggest keeping this on. I think it does a good job at reserving battery while still being bright enough in the sun. Uh, but if say you're filming like I am right now, I like to have it off. Uh, or if you just want more control over your brightness, I suggest turning it off as well. Uh, another great way to do this is to simply ask Siri. You can just press and hold the side button, but more on Siri in a sec, uh, and ask Siri to turn on or off auto brightness as well. Speaking of the display, let's take a look at display and brightness. Now, this part is gonna be specific for the 14 Pros and 15 Pros, as that will have to do with the always-on display. So we go ahead and tap on it here. Uh, you can choose to turn it on, and I recommend turning it on in general. I find it to be quite useful. However, one thing I recommend you turn off is the show wallpaper option, as not only it can be distracting, it also makes your screen much brighter and thus will take significantly more battery. Turning this feature off will just show you the time and your notifications uh, if you choose to have that on. So just to give you an idea of how that looks, as you can see, very clean, uh, minimalistic, and not distracting. Now, one of the features new to the 15 Pro as well as the 15 Pro Max is of course that new action button, which will replace the mute or silent toggle. Now, if you're like me, I often or almost always have my phone in silent mode. And I notice you always get this little bell in the top left to remind you of the fact that your phone is on silent. Now, if you're switching between modes, that may be useful, but I'm always on silent mode. So you can actually turn this off by going into sound and haptics, and then we can show in, uh, turn off show in status bar. And as you can see, now if we go to control center, we still have the option to quickly change change between uh, silent and loud mode, but it will no longer show in the menu bar. In this page also, uh, and this applies to all iPhones, if we scroll down, we also have the option to change the keyboard feedback, whether you want the sound on or the haptics on. Now, my recommendation is to turn off the sound. I think that's always kind of annoying to hear, uh, but I do actually like the haptics. I used to have this off, but I've kind of gotten used to it on my iPhone 15 Pro uh, and kind of like the additional feedback. The haptic will essentially give you a small vibration uh, with every key that you press to kind of mimic more uh, of a physical keyboard. 
This next setting is an absolute classic and one that I keep going back to, and that has to do with your notifications. So first of all, uh, what you're gonna want to make sure uh, is set properly is show previews. And you're gonna wanna make sure that your previews of your notification only show when your phone is unlocked. You can even set it to never if you want like added privacy, uh, but definitely make sure it's not set to always as what this would mean is that not only would it show on your lock screen that you have a message, it would also show the content of the message. This way it will only show the content when your phone is unlocked. And if we go back, uh, we also have the option to turn notifications off for screen sharing, something I highly recommend, uh, especially uh, if you have some work meeting or a presentation and you're mirroring your phone to a TV or projector, uh, you don't want your notifications to come in. So in that case, uh, turn that off here in this setting. Now, if we scroll down in this menu, you'll have a list of all of your apps. And my suggestion is to go through each of these apps and see which you do and which you don't want to be receiving notifications from. Many apps will want to bother you throughout the day, ping you with notifications. Most are useless. So I suggest you turn many of these off and only allow important app uh, notifications, such as, for example, messaging apps, uh, as that means when your phone goes off, it is important and worth checking. Otherwise, I just turn it off. So you got Amazon, um, Apple Store, App Store. So you can see a lot of these are off uh, Google, you know, my headphones apps, utilities apps, these things don't need to be sending me not uh, notifications throughout the day. So I just turn them off. Now you also have the option within each app to also show how a notification appears. So for example, let's take a look at health. Now let's say I want to get a health notification every once in a while to look at my uh, exercise trends or something, but I don't want that on the lock screen. I can actually turn that off and it will only show the notification when my phone is unlocked or when I'm already using it. You can also manually turn on or off the sound. Uh, and this is a great way to sort of fine tune your notifications. Uh, and again, if you want to turn it off, just turn it off here in the top and health will no longer send you notifications. And just like with notifications, background app refresh is another one of those settings that I highly recommend you go through to really see which apps need to be running. So to do that, let's go into general and then tap on background app refresh. Uh, and here you can manually turn on or off the apps that you do or don't want running. Now you do have the option here in the top to turn it off for all. I don't recommend you do this as some I do like to have on, for example, messaging apps, uh, maps applications, and certain productivity apps that I always want up to date. But other apps like shopping apps or appliance applications, I just turn them off. You can see I probably have half of my applications here off and this will save significant battery over time. Let's talk about the App Store. So if we scroll down here, uh, we go down to where we find the App Store. There's a few essential settings that I really recommend you turn off. And the first here is automatic app downloads. Let's say I download an app on my iPad or even my, another phone. I don't want it automatically on this phone and this here uh, will make sure that doesn't happen. What I do want though is automatic updates. As the, as the apps that I do have on my phone, I always want them to be on the newest version. So turning on this feature uh, will automatically update them uh, as well as in-app content. Let's say for example, uh, you have a podcast episode or some, some sort of content that you want downloaded, this will make sure that's downloaded beforehand. And if we scroll down, we have a little mobile data section. Uh, and again, here, you're gonna wanna make sure that this is off. This makes sure that no app uh, updates or apps or app content is downloaded over your mobile data and only done over Wi-Fi, uh, say when you are at home. Now, another big feature that or a setting that I always turn off are these two here. And that has to do with both in-app reviews, this means that an application can't ask you to rate it or to leave a review. Uh, personally, I do like to leave reviews, but only when I choose to do so. I don't like to be prompted you know, every time I open a new app. So you can go and turn that off there. Uh, and then we also have the option to offload unused apps. Now this may be useful if say you're running low on storage. Basically, if you have an app that you haven't used for a while, it will actually automatically delete that application and give you the option to re-download it if you want to open it. But I like to have my apps always ready, ready to go. Uh, so turning this off, make sure my apps are always on device. There's one quick setting that I wanna show you what has to do with AirDrop. So in general, uh, we click on AirDrop. Now, one of the new features with iOS 17 and the latest iPhones is you have this bringing devices together option where I can actually touch another iPhone up to the top of my, uh, of my iPhone and then have them automatically connect to then transfer data. And this is useful in a, to an extent, but personally, I have a work and a personal phone, so two phones in the same pocket, and they're constantly connecting if I have this feature on. Uh, so I definitely turn this off. And plus from a privacy and security perspective, Perspective, this means you will be less likely to uh, connect to another person's phone without wanting to do so. As this doesn't disable your air, uh, airdrop functionality, as you, of course that's controlled here, uh, make sure you have that set to contacts only, to only connect to people uh, that you know and only people you know can find your iPhone.
Have you ever had your phone tell you you're using it too close or holding it too close to your face? Well, there's a way to turn that off. Uh, if we scroll into screen time, we can scroll down to where we find screen distance and then turn off that feature here. And this way you can use your phone as close to your face as you want. Uh, may not be great. It does actually say here for kids, this is recommended to turn on. Uh, for adults, you do have the option to turn that off, especially useful uh, if say you have less than perfect eyesight. A useful quality of life setting uh, that I like to change as soon as I get my new phone uh, is to make sure that the side button or the sleep wake button doesn't end the call when I press it, say when I'm on a call and I just wanna lock my phone. So to do this, what you can do is scroll down uh, to where you find accessibility. And then we're going to scroll into where we find touch. And then over here on the right bottom, there we go, we have prevent lock to end call. Now, what again is gonna mean is you'll be able to lock your phone to just make your screen black uh, while being on a call without having to worry about accidentally ending that call, has definitely happened to me. And if you have a more recent iPhone, such as the 14 or the 15 series, there is a really powerful safety feature uh, that is called crash detection. And you're gonna wanna make sure that that is activated. So if we scroll down to where we find emergency SOS and scroll to where we find call after serious crash. And what this is going to do is automatically detect if you're in a car crash or a severe car crash, call emergency services and also let your emergency contacts know who you can have listed here at the bottom of the page. Another setting here I suggest you turn on uh, is call with five presses. Let's say you're in a position where you need to call for help or emergency services. Uh, if you wanna do it subtly, you can simply press the side button here five times in a row to trigger that function. Next, let's talk about Siri, and more specifically how you use it. So if we scroll down here uh, to where we find Siri and search, and then we have the option to turn on or off listen for. And I'm not gonna say the phrase to uh, trigger your series, but basically you have the option to turn either of these on and by default, they actually will be. However, this means that your phone will be constantly listening in the backgrounds so using the microphones for these activation phrases. And this is gonna take a significant battery over time. So my suggestion is to turn this off and instead activate Siri using the side button. Simply press and hold it here on the side as you can see, Siri will then come up. This will save you a lot of battery and still make Siri easily accessible. Earlier, we looked at a security and safety feature that meant that if you type in the wrong password on your phone 10 times, the phone will automatically erase itself. And this, I think, is a really powerful tool that I highly recommend you turn on but it is important to have a backup of your data in the event that your phone gets lost or say the data gets erased. So to do this, I highly recommend you set up an iCloud backup. So tap on your name here in the top, click on iCloud and then turn on iCloud backup. Now, chances are you won't have enough storage to back up your whole phone. So you may need to pay for storage, but I believe 50 gigabytes is only $1 and uh, 200 gigabytes like I have. I think it's only two or $3 per month, which if you think about it per year, is gonna be what, maybe $30 or so to always have an up-to-date and reliable backup of all of your data in the cloud in the event that ever you lose uh, your phone or say it gets stolen, you get a new phone and you will instantly have all of your data back just the way it was. I think for that relatively small cost, that peace of mind is absolutely worth it. I think of all the Apple services, uh, Apple Music, Arcade, News, etc. cetera, uh, iCloud storage really is the one that I can wholeheartedly recommend uh, and definitely suggest you turn on your iCloud backup. And this doesn't just work for your iPhone, it also works for things like your iPad, always good to have. And there we go. Those are the 25 settings that you need to change as soon as you get your brand new iPhone. If this video was helpful to you, please leave a like and subscribe to see more videos like this to help you get the most out of your tech. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.